Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Muscat in Oman where I'm on the last leg of a really epic trip to Australia and beyond. I'm actually in the middle of a long layover between Jakarta and London here in Muscat and this is the last flight of 2019 that I'll be taking. It's Oman Air business class on the Boeing 787-9 and it's going to be a great one. Enjoy the video. This video will be a comprehensive review of Oman Air's flagship, their Boeing 787-9, in their brilliant business class, including an overnight transit in Muscat, Oman. Travelling from Jakarta to London will kick off with an afternoon flight to Muscat in the rear business class cabin, covering the 3,847 miles in 7 hours 15 minutes. After an overnight hotel stay, included in the cost of the ticket, we'll head to London aboard another 787-9, covering the 3,627 miles in 7 hours flat. We'll look at the superb seats, the fabulous food and the luxurious lounge Oman Air offered on this fantastic closing trip to my journey to Australia and beyond. Check-in at Jakarta was dead simple. Oman Air is a premium carrier and there are segregated queues for business class. Having had my bag weighed, a full two kilos heavier than when I left Teesside Airport in England a few weeks back, it was time to head through security and check out the terminal. I spoke a bit about international terminals in Indonesia in the last video, and boy is Terminal 3 a breath of fresh air. Opened in 2016, you can see just how different it is from one of the older domestic terminals here at the same airport. It's a great advert for the country, and I love the great views over the runway. Where this terminal does fall down is the lounge. When I travelled, the Plaza Premium Lounge was closed and everyone was directed through to the Blue Sky Lounge. With all that demand and all that priority pass money to collect, the agents just let the lounge get really busy. The lounge itself is hardly spectacular and the buffet uninspiring. There are lots of good places to eat in the terminal, so I'd recommend using one of those or heading to the Plaza Premium Lounge if you really want a lounge and it's still open. Our 787 Dreamliner arrived promptly on its inbound flight from Muscat. Oman Air has nine 787 aircraft. Two are the smaller Dash 8 variety, and of the seven Dash 9 examples it has, two have first class. Those two aircraft only fly to London, which is Oman Air's most important route. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN, virtual private network. VPNs can spoof, perfectly legally, your device's geographic location, giving you lots of advantages, like unblocking blocked content, staying safe on public Wi-Fi, and leveraging lower prices online. Sometimes this works with plane tickets. Flying to Hong Kong in business class this time without the VPN, from the UK I'm seeing the lowest prices here of £1635 return. Enabling the VPN to search as if I'm from a lower income country can reveal better options, as the way airlines price their tickets sometimes varies between the country of sale. Here an option with Israeli airline El Al saves us £48. In one go, that's a greater saving than 27 months of Surfshark membership. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 84% off and an extra four months for free of Surfshark VPN. Both aircraft you'll see in this video have only business class, thanks to one of Oman Air's first class equipped 787s being unavailable for the London flight. There are 30 business class seats across one big front cabin and a tiny one row mini cabin behind the second set of doors.
And here we are, Oman Air's splendid business class featuring the Rockwell Collins Apex Suite, which at one point was the most expensive seat for an airline to install in business class. Seats here are in a 2-2-2 configuration. Oman Air doesn't have premium economy, so directly behind business class is economy class in a 3-3-3 configuration. All the business class seats come with great privacy, featuring dividers which unlock after takeoff to separate you from your seatmate, if that's what you want. You might recognize that this is essentially the same seat as in my previous Gulf Air review. Personally, I like the Gulf Air finishes a bit more, although this is still a fantastic seat with all the same features. Window seats are slightly offset to allow for a small walkway, giving direct aisle access. It's a great passenger-friendly design, not skimping on space and expensive to install, so it's quite rare. Only Gulf Air, Oman Air, Korean Air and Japan Airlines have this product. After an Arabic coffee and the first of many hot towels, I noticed that despite the flight being fairly full up front, I had this mini cabin all to myself. Time to head to Oman, a new country for me. Let's go. Takeoff was leisurely and we climbed up over a few local storms to our cruise altitude of 38,000 feet. 
you can of course dim the electronic windows using a button, although it's worth pointing out that even the darkest setting doesn't obscure direct sunlight totally. These seats are great. Unlike the Gulf Air version, Oman Air has a fixed ottoman, which provides in-flight storage underneath. As I mentioned, the dividers unlock after takeoff, so if you do have a seatmate, you don't have to look at them. If you're traveling as a pair, you can keep it down and talk. The only thing that I don't like about this seat is the control placement. It's quite easy to knock these if you're resting your arm on the armrest or as you sleep. But all of that out of the way, this is my favorite business class seat I've tried, apart from Qatar Airways Q-Suite. There's just so much storage and privacy here. The entertainment screen is a good size, but is not close to you, so a remote is provided to save you reaching to touch it. The addition of decent quality headphones and adjustable wings on the seat make for a good lounging experience. USB and power sockets are located conveniently next to the seat cushion, which is handy because I plan to get some editing done on this flight. The Wi-Fi was good but isn't cheap though, with 5 hours costing 40 US dollars. The outstanding highlight of Oman Air was the food. A comprehensive menu was on offer and the presentation and flavor of everything I had was outstanding from the amuse-bouche to the dessert. This pumpkin and lentil soup was the best soup I've ever had on a plane, even beating one I had in Cathay Pacific's first class. The sea bass and rice were perfectly done, and the meal was capped with a delicious small ice cream with fruit. Having got a lot of work done, it was time to land in Muscat. I'll talk about the business class hotel service in detail a bit later, but basically the airline reps take you to receive a transit visa like this. You get driven to a nearby hotel, the airline pays for dinner, bed and breakfast, and you'll be collected the next day in time for your flight. It's amazing, you never have to pay for anything, it's so convenient and what a way to make a guest feel welcome. Some people might prefer to connect onto the London flight which leaves at 2am, but I found the option to stay over super useful because I had work to do and the overnight stay really gave my body a rest. So this is it, the last leg. Muscat Airport is a welcome step down from the showy Arabian terminals like Dubai and Doha. It's a pleasant low-key airport and check-in was a breeze. With a silver boarded boarding pass in hand for the 1410 departure, I spent a bit of time watching the planes. There are always a few interesting visitors like this A320 of Kuwait Airways in a weird paint scheme. In fact, that is a stripped down version of popular US holiday airline Allegiant Air's paint scheme, to whom this aircraft previously belonged. It's worth pointing out if you have a connection in Muscat in economy class, or if you're flying another carrier, there's an airside aerotel which looks superb. As for me, I had an hour and a half until departure, so I could kill some time in the lounge. Naturally, I arrived on the last day. The airline's own lounge was closed, but Oman Air paid the prime class lounge upstairs for access while their own lounge was closed. I have to admit, for a third party lounge, this is one heck of a place. It's so tasteful with plenty of food and drink, a spa, and so many different spaces which are all different to one another. Oman Air's lounge is surely amazing, and I'm sad that I didn't get to try it, but this is a great substitute and better than many airlines' main lounges at their hub airports.
boarding time and the seamless experience of Oman Air Business Class wins through again as the empty priority lane means I'm the first on board again. Unlike Jakarta, there are two fingers to this airbridge in Muscat, so business class gets its own entrance at the front door. Here's the front cabin four rows of apex suites in a 222 layout and while there's no such thing as a bad seat in this cabin you might want to avoid the third row which is row 12 on this aircraft there's a window missing here we've got our bedding here a drink and the amenity kit which we'll look at a bit later and of course another coffee Thank you. So about the hotel stay, it's unclear what Oman Air is offering now or plans to offer after the pandemic lifts, but essentially there are two separate schemes. The one I used was for a layover. I was in transit connecting between two flights less than 24 hours apart and business class customers only could request an off airport hotel at no extra cost. You could do this online, by phone, or even at the airport desk when you arrived. Oman Air also used to offer stopovers at this time too. Whether in business or economy, you could get one free night in Oman if you booked a two or three night stopover. When it's time to travel again, that's worth looking into. I found the layover service exceptional anyway. Our route takes us right over the Eastern Arabian Peninsula and we cruise above the clouds at 36,000 feet. We soon discover it's a bit bumpy and there's company up here too. I just about managed to capture not one, but two aircraft heading the opposite direction in this shot. One thing I didn't mention about the seat is the table, which is really nicely engineered and will slide forwards and back and will also allow you, if you're nimble enough, to squeeze out of the seat and get up even while the table's got plates on it. Unsurprisingly, the service on this flight was also excellent. Really polished Omani hospitality matched by another different, equally impressive menu. This flight leaves at the same local time as the Jakarta one and is basically the same distance too, but I noticed on the London flight there's a small extra course served prior to landing. Perhaps something to do with the fact that London is Oman Air's flagship route. The salmon and kingfish starter was beautiful. Such a difference between this and some Western carriers' presentation of food. And the stuffed chicken breast with saffron was tender and moist. Outstanding airline food yet again, and I am so glad I made a special effort to try this airline after numerous recommendations to do so. With no work to do this time, I was able to explore the entertainment. A pretty solid selection really, including some Bollywood movies. I watched Simba, which was really good.
I don't normally use much of the amenity kit contents, but here's the kit I got on this flight from Omani perfume brand Amouage. The eye shades and DVT socks are gorgeous. You can turn your seat number to a do not disturb setting if you want to sleep, and I figured I'd have a nap. The seat reclines into a fully flat bed, which is very wide by business class standards. With the armrests down, there's no problem at all for side sleepers in these seats. The bedding supplied by the airline was very high quality and I slept pretty well for a couple of hours. I was woken an hour before landing by the arrival of the small trio snack, which was lovely and meant I didn't need to eat dinner when I got home. All business class customers get fast track immigration paid for by the airline, although as a UK passport holder, I didn't need it, as I can use the electronic gates at Heathrow. We ended our trip with a scenic hold around Heathrow and a look at some of London's landmarks. Overall, an excellent experience. Business travelers might be put off by Oman Air's limited route network and expensive Wi-Fi, but I found this the best value experience of 2019. Two seven-hour flights with exceptional food, some of the best seats in the sky, a fully comped hotel layover with dinner and breakfast, flying the carrier's flagship route into London Heathrow from Jakarta, and the price? a cool £698 one way, which I paid for in a flash sale originating from Indonesia by using my VPN. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 84% off and an extra four months for free of Surfshark VPN. Thanks so much for being with me on this Australia and Beyond series of videos. There's so much more content to post on this channel, both from before the pandemic and during it. Cheers and make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.